In this video, we'll dive deeper into designing the look and feel of our app. To design what elements are shown on screen, we'll be working with a layout XML file. Now, since our app will only have one screen, we've only got one layout file to worry about, the activity underscore main dot XML file. What you see on your screen right now might not exactly mirror what I'm showing you at the moment. First off, notice there's a toggle between the source code of the layout file and this design view. I've got the design view selected at the moment. Selecting text here at the bottom will show the source code of the layout file instead. Also, there's different ways for you to style the preview in the middle of the screen. In the toolbar above the phone preview, we can set if we want to show the design or show the blueprint, or show both the design and the blueprint. If we have it set to blueprint, we only see the outlines of the components on screen. Now, finally, what's shown in the middle of the preview will depend on what came shipped with the template when we created the project. Now, since Android Studio updates over time, each version of the software has a slightly different starting template. In Android Studio version 2.3, the template comes with a constraint layout and a text view. For this video, we're not going to be working with the constraint layout just yet. Instead, we'll be working with another type of layout to help us understand how to arrange things on screen. First, we're going to make sure that no matter when you're watching this video, that both you and I have the same starting point. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult to follow along. And to do that, we're going to delete all the components that came with the template, like this text view here. So switch over to the source code in the layout file by hitting the text toggle at the bottom, and then copy all the XML code in the description of this video to replace the source code in the layout XML file. Simply select all and then hit paste. When we switch back to the design view, we can see that we're going to be working off a relative layout in the component tree. Now the goal of this tutorial is to get you familiar with designing a layout. As a first step, we'll be designing our layout with a particular device in mind. And only afterwards will we show you how to design a layout that looks good on various different screen sizes. So the first thing I will do is adjust the preview so that it mirrors a device on which I will install my app. So I've got an older HTC, which is 4.7 inches, which matches the dimensions of the Nexus 4. If I was designing for a larger phone, I could pick the Nexus 6P, which is 5.7 inches. Or I could even pick the Nexus 9 if I was designing for a tablet. If you're not entirely sure of your phone's screen dimensions, you can always head over to GSM Arena and search for your model. I always wondered how big those exploding Galaxy Note 7s were, and it turns out they're 5.7 inches. So that's quite a big phone to be catching fire. So if I had a Galaxy Note 7 lying around and I wanted to design an app for it, I would probably pick the Nexus 6 preview so that what I see in Android Studio will be closely mirrored when I run the app. Next, we want to drag a button on screen that we can press to roll the dice. Click and drag a button from the palette to the screen preview. Move the button into place so that you can see the dotted lines showing that the button is centered in the relative layout and let go. Now you've done exactly what I've done. You should be able to check the source code and see the following two properties. Click on text and you should see layout center vertical and layout center horizontal set to true. This indicates that the button will be centered within its container. Now let's change the button text. After all, Having a button read button isn't very useful. Remember, the best place to store arbitrary text like this is within the strings XML. So let's open it up here and add a new string. Let's call the string button text. So I'm going to open my angle brackets, type S, and already auto suggest will suggest string. I'm going to hit tab on my keyboard and then give my string the name button text. When I move my cursor over here and close the angle bracket, Android Studio will already helpfully close the whole XML tag for me as well. Now all I have to decide on is the value for that string I just made. I'm going to put in roll because that's what I want my button to read. Now I'm going to go back to my layout and I'm going to change this button text property to the string I just made. So I'm going to type in at string and Android Studio will already help me out with a suggestion. So I'm going to click the down arrow on my keyboard and hit enter. And behold, the text of my button has updated because it now points to the string. Next, I'm going to give that button a bit more of a descriptive ID. Every element on your screen should have an ID. And it should be descriptive because this is the name that you'll use to refer to it later on. For example, if you were to have four buttons on screen and they were all called button one, button two, button three, button four, 
then you'll have a tough time figuring out what they do. So the more descriptive your name is, the better. So I'm going to give this button the ID role button. And this is how we'll refer to it later on. So for those of you who are watching the video and building the app alongside me, I've got a mini challenge for you. Can you make the button blue and the button text white? To do that, you'll have to look at two properties. One of them is called text color and the other one's called background. I recommend you pause the video before I give you the solution in a bit. All right, here's how I would do it. I would go back to the design screen and look at all my button properties. Then I would scroll down until I find text color, click on this and set it to white here. Then I would scroll back up and find the background color. Click on the three dots, select color and set it to blue here. Okay, now we're gonna start adding a few more elements to the screen. Scroll down in the palette and find the relative layout. Click and drag it into your component tree. Here you can see it's sitting right below the button. Now we're gonna add the button to this relative layout. We're gonna put the roll button inside this relative layout. And we can do that simply by selecting it and dragging it down slightly so that black arrow is right here and letting go. Now you can tell by the indentation that the roll button is inside the relative layout which is inside another relative layout. Let's check back to the source code. Click on text, and you should see here that the indentation of the XML code reflects what we saw in the component tree. Now, we wanna change the top level layout to a linear layout. And we can do that very easily by selecting the opening tag here, and by typing LIN, and then using autocomplete to insert the rest for us. When I hit tab, both the opening tag and the closing tag are updated to read linear layout. You can think of all these layouts as containers for arranging things on screen. You'll see how this works exactly in a bit. A linear layout will arrange its contents either vertically or horizontally. And we can set this in a property. So if we come in here and type orientation and hit tab, we have a choice of setting the orientation to horizontal or vertical. Pick vertical and hit enter. Now let's set the background for our app simply by adding the background property to the linear layout. Start typing back and use autocomplete to help you out. Hit tab and then scroll down until you find at drawable new background and hit enter. Great, so now we've got that nice felt canvas thing going on. Let's switch back to the design view and then add another relative layout to our component tree. Now you'll notice it can be a bit tricky putting this in the right place. What you wanna do is you wanna have that little black arrow pointing at activity underscore main at our topmost linear layout. If you do that, you'll have the same indentation between these two layouts. However, if you missed, you might end up with something like this, where you've put this new relative layout inside the layout where you've got the button. So just click and drag it back up to make sure these are indented by the same amount. Next, we're gonna add an image view to this relative layout that we just added. So we're gonna scroll down and from the palette, we're gonna grab this image view here, drag it down to the component tree and let go when that black arrow is to the left of the new relative layout. Then we're gonna select our Las Vegas Dicey logo, click okay. Fantastic. So in the component tree, we now have a relative layout that contains an image view and another relative layout that contains the roll button. But wait a second, where's the button on the preview? It's uh... It looks like it's off screen. That has to do with how much space this relative layout with the image view takes up. You can see in the preview that it takes up the entire screen. So let's take a look at these properties. We've got layout height set to match parent. The parent is whatever is indented to the left. So the parent of the relative layout is the linear layout. The parent of the image view would be the relative layout. And the parent of the roll button would be this relative layout. In other words, the indentation helps us figure out if a component is contained within another one. So let's change the relative layouts layout height property from match parent to wrap content. This means that the relative layout isn't gonna be as big as a screen anymore. It's only gonna be as big as whatever it contains, which is the image view with the Dicey logo. We can see here, as soon as we select that, the button pops back on screen and the blue box shrinks to the height of the logo. 
Note, we've left the layout width set to match parent, which is why the blue box still goes across the whole screen. Okay, let's add another layout to our component tree. This time we're gonna grab a horizontal linear layout. We're gonna drag and drop it so it's in the same level as the two relative layouts. And again, if we drop it here, we see that everything is pushed off screen because this linear layout that we just added has layout height set to match parent as a default. So it takes up the entire screen. At the moment, it doesn't contain anything. So if we change this to wrap content, it will shrink and take up none of the space. So let's leave it at that. Next, we're gonna add another two image views. These are gonna hold our dice images. In the palette, we're gonna to go to images and media and drag and drop the first image view into the linear layout. Then we're gonna select dice one and we're gonna do the same again and select say dice two and click okay. And here you can see the two image views arranged next to each other inside the linear layout. And this is because it is a horizontal linear layout in contrast to our topmost linear layout, which is vertical. So the horizontal linear layout arranges its contents next to each other. The vertical linear layout arranges them from top to bottom. We can play around with this to make this more clear. So if you select linear layout and then you go over here to the properties and you change the orientation from horizontal to vertical, the dice images is arranged like this. Let's change that back to horizontal. Also, let's move these layouts around a bit. Ideally, we want the logo to go on top and the die in the middle with the button at the bottom. So in the component tree, we're gonna grab this relative layout here and try and move it so that it goes at the top. So I can so I can drop it off here or I can drop it off here. And at least now we've got them set in the right order. The other thing I wanna show you is that you can do more than just set the layout height to wrap content and match parent. These are essentially rules used to tell the relative layout how to size itself. However, you can also give it a hard value. For example, if I put in 150 DP and hit enter, then my relative layout will shrink to 150 density independent pixels. And if I set that value to something like 300 DP, then I'll get a bit more space below the image. To make this look good on the Nexus 4, I would probably have to set it to around 250 DP. The other thing I might wanna do from a design perspective is I wanna set a rule somewhere to center this logo. And I have two ways I can do this. If I click on the image view that contains the logo and I look through the properties, I will find a property that says layout center horizontal. And if I tick it, my logo will be centered in the middle of the screen. Another way to do it is to select the relative layout itself and find a property called gravity. Here you would be setting the rules that apply to all the contents of the relative layout. So if there was another image view inside or a button, this would apply to all of the components that are nested inside this relative layout. So if I click on gravity and I say center horizontal, I would be able to accomplish the same thing. Now remember how we were talking about giving the individual elements a descriptive name? Image view, image view two, image view three are not very helpful. So let's take a look at our source code again and change the IDs for these image views. For the image view containing the logo, we're gonna give it the ID image underscore logo. And for the image view containing the left dice, we're gonna call it image underscore left dice. And for the image view containing the right dice, you guessed it, we're not gonna be very creative here. We're gonna call it image underscore right dice. These are good descriptive names, which will help us identify these image views in our Java code later on when it comes to changing the dice faces. Okay, cool. So let's do a quick recap of the things that we discussed in this video. First off, a linear layout that's vertical arranges its contents from top to bottom. A linear layout that's horizontal arranges its contents from left to right. If we look at the component tree, the indentation helps us figure out which elements are contained inside other elements. So we have a logo that's contained inside a relative layout, a relative layout that's contained inside a linear layout. And here we have two image views displaying the die that are contained inside a horizontal linear layout, which in turn is contained inside a vertical linear layout. In Android lingo, the view that's contained inside is called the child and the container for that view is called the parent. And we've seen these words used in the properties. Wrap content will size the container as big as its contents, while match parent will size something as big as its container. 
finally, we've seen two ways of centering things. We can set a rule on the container itself to pull all its contents to a particular place by setting its gravity. Alternatively, we can set the property on the individual view to align itself to the right of the parent, to the left of the parent, or centering itself. And that's it. We've completed the design for the app. Next, we're going to start writing Java code.